Mike test one two. <laughs> I was I was going for the dead space right there, but no, right, it's sorry. fine. You just fuck it up, man. It's sorry. fine. It's fine. It's fine. Ah, um, while sitting here with your fucking pedo beard. Oh, you know. Um, welcome, folks, to a Shadow Channel podcast. Uh, last time we did one of these, we had Ross Hepburn and his good friend and director Doug on the show. That would have been last September. We haven't done anything since then in the art section. And Doug may be on the show next month, but for the time being, I am joined today in this extremely small room. Um, it's two big men in a very small room. Anything could happen. Uh, <laughs> by my good friend Ruben. Hello, aka Deadlock. Aka Deadlock. I was about to say better known as Deadlock, but you you rudely cut across me. That's fine. That's fine, Ruben. You need someone to like, rudely cut across <laughs> you. Let's face it. Um, I'm just gonna. I'm. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this off because. Okay. It does distract me when it's in the background. Yeah, yeah. Um, so welcome, man. Um, Thank you. I've I, I've been doing this for two years, and I wanted to get you on the show. Yeah. So I'm it's glad you're here now. I know it's taken a while, but yeah, I'm glad so, to be here. Um, I suppose the first thing I wanted to ask you yep. um, is to tell me all about the last couple of years for you making music, and you've been making a lot of different music. Yeah. Um, and really, for you, how the um, how the creative process usually pans out when you try and go from um, idea to reality. You know, when you're when you're yeah, when yeah. you're sitting there and you're saying, "I want to make something new. I want to make some new music." You've been doing this for what since 2011? End of 2011? Uh, mm, longer than that. Yeah. Like six, six, years, six years high school. So yeah, I don't know four four years. Yeah, four years. So you're sitting in your studio. I'm sure a lot of people out there, especially people that you know want to make music in the future. Yeah. Or, or they want to make music right now. They're contemporary mm -hmm. music makers, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, they're they're currently attempting to make music. Shut up in some stuffy room somewhere, much yeah. like this one. Well, that's what I'm kind of doing yeah. as well, though. In the same Absolutely. Theory. Absolutely. And Just, yeah. so you start off with an idea. Where do you go from there, usually? <sighs> God, I, I don't really know. It kind of... It depends. With, well, if you're talking about electronic music, not my, not my kind of rap stuff, if you're talking about my electronic stuff, then that does kind of stem from... It's usually influenced. It's usually listening to other tracks, other artists, and then like, kind of from there, thinking I like that sound. Let's try and recreate that and kind of put my own spin on it and maybe put a few styles together. Um, having said that, there is occasionally where it's just kind of like, I don't know, kind of it just pops on, just kind of kind of happens, just kind of I don't know. Yeah, you get like kind of light bulb. Yeah, moment. yeah, kind of. It's just like, boom. It's like oh, I need to do that, and then I have to. I quite often like if because obviously I'm not around my computer all the time or I'm not don't have an instrument to sit down and play if I'm in I don't know uni or work or whatever I like I just I quite often record on my phone just me kind of beatboxing it almost just like like yeah just kind of like rough beats or rough like kind of tunes ideas and then from there going to the studio and like actually produce them um, it's weird how that's the case actually when you said that there you you basically beatbox into your phone yeah uh, or there have been times when you've yeah definitely been known to beatbox into your phone it's strange because that uh that way of almost taking notes mm -hmm. is it seems to be universal across the board for creativity for all because arts, yeah, you yeah, get people true. journalists who'll just vox pop really quickly and be like remember to do this consider this in your upcoming article and everybody seems to do that um, and I think maybe is would you say the nature of creativity it's one of those kind of the light bulb moment is literally when you go oh, holy crap yeah. I have a fucking idea I think when you hear it back in your own voice as well it kind of makes more sense mm -hmm. you kind of it kind of reminds you of the time that you actually thought of it rather than just a note in your phone or like a written down hearing you say it kind of brings it back to your head when it first came there yeah yeah no I, I completely understand um, it's 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 more evocative than if somebody it's a little bit like if you knew all the information in a textbook and you wrote the textbook yourself you'd open the first page and be like bam I understand this right away yeah but a lot yeah. of it is getting through what the other person is trying to communicate to you yeah and exactly. when it's your own ideas that you're that you're communicating for yourself for the future you mm -hmm. know to look up in the next couple of days when you got some time um, like that little pop you, you know that little like, yeah, beatbox yeah. you're doing on your phone you can pick it up right away and I think that's almost an art in and of itself because it allows you to like save ideas yeah. effectively and not forget them you know because do you ever get that thing where you go I'll write it down later and then you forget it like a dream yeah yeah basically yeah. I, do, I do that I, just, I had one I had a dream last night that I should have wrote it down alright yeah tell me all about it <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember I don't, I don't, I remember it was some kind of like weird alien thing that like stuck to your brain and then I don't know you had to do something before you died I don't know it's fucking terrifying like <laughs> yeah, absolutely yeah. terrifying 
but yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. I suppose the second thing I wanted to ask you um, is, having spoken about the creative process that you undergo, yeah, and you're taking it from an idea to a reality. Are you a gardener, or <laughs> which is not a pun? I'm but a gardener. Yeah, I'm a gardener. <laughs> <laughs> that was not even intended to be a pun. Okay. Are you a gardener or an architect? And what I mean by that is I heard this term used the other day uh, where someone was talking about Stephen King. Okay. He said that Stephen King is a gardener, but most authors are architects, which means the author will take a basic framework and then they'll build on top of it, then they'll build on top of it. And, you know, and they build it like a building. Okay, yeah. Know? They construct it like a building, whereas Stephen King's one of those guys where it's an organic growth in his head. So he goes, I have this one idea. Um, I don't know, like... Uh, witches in Salem, like, and then he and he it morphs that into Salem's Lot, you know, or it or something. I think I think with a uh, with music, especially electronic music, it's you're pretty much always an architect mm. because you're you're layering up tracks, mm. especially with electronic music. You know, you're you're doing like the drums first, and then you're on top of that. Or, well, that's the way I do it anyway. And then from on top of that, you're putting down the melodies and putting down the bass line and stuff. So it's it has that kind of almost architect architectural feel from it just because you've kind of got the tracks kind of going down like that and you're just slowly building on it adding more tracks kind of the song is then getting fuller and adding yeah. up and yeah I, I suppose that that would be true because would you say that you listen back to your older stuff and I've been listening to your stuff basically since you started recording but yeah. it's, it's reached a sort of crescendo this week because I've been listening to it in preparation yeah, for yeah, this yeah. and um, I suppose your debut album the, the one that came out before Temporary Change um is, is yes. I suppose if you compare it to something like Atomic Monsters, it's very minimalistic. Yeah, well, more that, basic beats. No, like, definitely. You know. It's it's a uh, it's like the first things that I did. It's like yeah. there's no more than like yeah. ten Emancipation. Tracks. It's yeah. like dun, 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 dun. yeah, yeah, and it's like and it's and that's I think it's the same for everything. In yeah, a way. I mean, and well, uh, yeah, there's still there's still Emancipation. I still think is probably one of the best tracks I've ever did. When I yeah. look, when Agreed. I when I when I listen back to that, I still love it. It's still great. But you know, think of the EP before that. I don't even know if you've heard. <laughs> it's like it's like proper like really early dubstep with like just just a kick, a snare, a hi hat, and a wobble. That's that's literally it. And uh, when I listen back to that now, I just I almost cry. I'm just like, what what is this? It's the what same was I every time. Doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the first thing I ever did was it was uh um well inadvertently the first thing I ever did was that seven hour recording that we did on uh, Javi's phone. Okay, yeah. Yeah, like years ago. But the first thing I ever did that was a critique of the, the New World Order um, that lasted about seven minutes and involved me, like, very quietly speaking into my phone in my flat. Okay, and it was yeah. I listened back to it, and I, I think I've actually destroyed it. Like yeah. it's, it's like Solomon's Temple. I erased <laughs> it from history. But um, <laughs> it is, yeah, it is one of those things. Like, But it always starts off more minimalistically, and like, technology is the same, isn't it? Like, we mm -hmm. still live in caves, you know. But yeah, you always no, want exactly. more, and you always want to improve, which is why people live in condos now. and yeah, definitely bungalows. You know, um, but I suppose the second thing, it, it, so far as that's concerned, and you, we touched on it there for a minute. You said that uh, we're basically talking about the evolution of your style over yeah, time, yeah, and how the ability to make songs more complex almost gives you an extra weapon or an extra tool in your toolbox. Yeah, yeah, definitely. that you can utilize to create the sound that you want to create. So, how would you describe stylistically the evolution of 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 your of your style the over ev time? The evolution of Deadlock. The evolution of Deadlock. <laughs> uh, well, well, at first. I first got into producing music through dubstep because I was doing like what 2008-2009 when I first started listening to dubstep before it kind of got shit and mainstream uh, <laughs> yeah and that's kind of what made me I just I fell in love with it instantly and like just kind of thought I want I want to do that I want to make that it can't be that difficult I, I just got myself a MacBook so I thought fuck it let's do it let's just do a attempt at it and uh, you know that that took up my time from for the first Two out for EP and then the first album, a lot of that stuff. Step kind of branching the house a bit and stuff, and then I don't know. I kind of I like to change it up quite a lot. You, you, I mean, you yourself have said that to me quite a lot that you like. That's what you like about me, and that's what I like about my music as well. Is because every EP or every album, I try to change it. Absolutely, try yeah. To make it different. It's quite eclectic. Like um, you uh, I mean, you're literally you're you're you're. I, well, I suppose having told me about the early one, mm -hmm. technically your second EP was called temporary change yeah and that's that's um, trance that's like it's yeah completely it's completely different and uh i think is that the uh is that the the ep that has aurora yeah and uh yeah and uh, i forget the name elation. of the other one yeah elation one of my yeah. one of my i like that track it's yeah that's one that's of one of my favorites as well um and and from there i suppose you you, you did you go back because because roots came out 
quite recently, relatively recently. Yeah, yeah. But in between your debut album, you had Temporary Change. Yep. And you also had... Uh, Keith Ness as yeah, well. Yeah, Keith Ness EP, uh, where you had like Laser Bubbles and uh, yeah. Pagan... Crazy Pagan crazy, shit. Crazy Pagan shit. And uh, I, lo- I love Laser Bubbles to this day. And Crazy yeah, Pagan yeah. shit has got this like weird ethereal sound to it. The, um, the Ancient Land is mm-hmm. one of my favorite ones as yeah. well. Yeah. That that's quite interesting. That mm. that 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 EP. Yeah, that EP just came from a weekend in case. Exactly, and I wanted to ask you about that because with regard, we're talking stylistically. Uh, I'm guessing that was the first time that you had specifically made a piece of music, if you yeah. consider an, an EP or an album yeah, yeah. to be just one big modern day symphony, isn't it? I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Which is why the shittiest albums are always the ones that have got like three Justin Bieber singles and then all the yeah. other crappy songs that you recorded in the studio just to fill the space. Yeah, to charge the extra three quid on iTunes, but uh. That must have been, I'd imagine, the first time for you where you were taking a piece of music from a direct single experience. Yeah, one hundred percent. I went for a weekend at Keith Ness. I dropped some acid. And took a shitload of acid. Yeah, and I'm making this music. It's literally the Keith Ness EP. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's what from, was that like? Because that must great. have been strange to translate a one direct experience. That, that was another thing we were talking earlier about taking notes on your phone. I didn't actually do that, but there was times during the I don't know 48 hour period where we were all losing our minds that like I kind of had ideas for songs and kind of like almost like pieces of information and lyrics that were happening to me that like I then transformed into music when I got home and uh Louis the, one of the guy the guy that owns the cottage up there he wrote like a little poem which they ended up going into ancient land and stuff like that just about our experience because it, it's well it's a mind all and it changes your life it's a mind all experience so like that kind of like influenced that but yeah, that I mean that I, I actually forget about that EP because because it happened so fast. With the other ones, it's usually like six or seven months to actually go into it. As well as with that, I literally did those five songs in the space of about a week when I came back because I just had this yeah. like burst of information yeah, in my brain. You, you were just buzzed for it. Yeah, you had yeah. it. You had it right on. It yeah, it was on the there, top so layer of your like, brain. Yeah, it it's uh, it's one of those things like uh, you you get folk that are almost a little too prolific and i think that the as a result of trying to get too much stuff out too fast mm-hmm. can sacrifice their quality and yeah their style. definitely and also i mean i heard uh if you ever watched ted talks there was a guy who gave a speech he said you should do you should do less and think more mm-hmm. and say you know if you're if you're saying i'm gonna make another ep you're better off sitting down for three months yeah thinking about music in general yeah you're more yeah, likely definitely. to create something new next time you know definitely which is which is kind of what i did with roots as well because mm. because with roots it was it was more of a collection of just individual tracks that i kind of had half started and build it up and kind of ideas and here and there that i just kind of thought let's mash these together and bring it out as an album yeah it was like your detox but you actually released it yeah yeah <laughs> unlike dr dre <laughs> um and I enjoyed Don't Roots. Don't be in the drain. Don't <laughs> you saw, be going anywhere near I drain I saw that room. promotional video the other day, <laughs> um, and I'll link it in the bottom of this particular video if you have not already seen it, but it yeah. was a promotional video for your new album, which we'll get to in a couple of minutes. Yeah. Um, but with regard, to, um, with regard to Roots, Roots was definitely the most varied stylistically yeah, and, definitely. and sound-wise. With, I think with Roots, it was like, with like all my other EPs, like I had my dubstep one, I had the deadlock, I had you know a temporary change which and then i, I kind of stuck to a style through them all and then with roots it was more just like this is all the styles that i've collectively like got good at <laughs> this is the style this is like where it got to where it's like um yeah all, all they'd all like kind of collected and i kind of thought i'm gonna make an album with all these different styles on it and show like kind of a variation of what i can do i also wanted to put a lot more vocals on it mm-hmm. um because roots came out after drop bombs the first rap album yes that came out before roots but like yeah as far as dead like the solo stuff roots like i kind of i'd got used to recording vocals and i'd, I'd kind of progressed to that and i wanted to do more of that so you know i got emily on a couple of tracks i did like quite a lot of like my actual like vocals and then tweaking with them afterwards as well and mm-hmm. stuff on it which i kind of i feel like with dance music and with electronic music everyone's doing it you kind of need a little vocal hook or just something there to kind of make it stand out make yeah it, make it kind of stick in your brain rather than like because just the melody and the bass isn't enough and you need you need that that little thing to yeah. kind of keep it exactly and that's where brain. the kind of evolution of it matters is if you don't move forward you know you, you die yeah in terms yeah. of i mean yeah not even in terms of the eyes of other people but you keep doing the same thing you just get sick of it and you yeah, stop doing it yeah you definitely and you waste your potential and i think one of the worst uh crimes against humanity especially in this day and age so many people on the planet and mm-hmm. like get too humanitarian but a lot of people malnourished and shit the worst thing about that is 
the fact that you're wasting all that human potential yeah of people who could be you know composers or scientists or uh, artists of all stripes you know yeah. and on that note i mean i wanted to ask you before we get on to the rap inside of this or yeah. the hip-hop side of this rather um, I've always preferred the term hip hop to rap in. Same I'm about it. Same. Even though, if you actually think about the word hip hop, it's a much sillier word. Yeah. Uh, but it, I think it's it's it's, a, I, it's more general. It's more like kind of very term hip hop as well as yeah. like rap. You just kind of think of just one guy. Yeah. When big butch black guys say hip hop, they make it sound more legit. Yeah. It's, it's like, just yeah. the way they say it. That know? sounds like like oh, that's that's yeah. that's some serious shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, basically, it's it's interesting because. The worst thing about that is all that wasted human potential, and in a world though, which where music is becoming more and more, uh, I mean, it's more popular than it's ever been, and that's not just because there's more people on the planet. Mm-hmm. I feel like the internet, in your case, is a perfect example. Yeah, definitely has has caused an explosion, particularly of electronic music. Yeah, definitely to the point where. Um, electronic music has sort of solidified its place among hip hop and rock and roll as these staples of music that never go away. You know? Yeah, definitely. I think I think electronic music will never go away from now on because mm-hmm. it's just it's so easy for someone to do. It's like I'm kind of like big, 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 blah, I'm kind of like digging myself out of a job or whatever here, but saying that anyone can do it. But it's you've got a laptop, you can make electronic music. You don't have to be able to play an instrument to be able to make electronic music. You just have to fucking fanny about with a few keys a few samples here and there and you can make something basic it's probably not going to be very good but you can do it and I think as much as I love the internet and the way that it has like it means I mean, for me it makes it so much easier to actually give my music to the masses not that actually masses listen to it but you know what I mean it, can, it makes that much easier but it also means that there is so much shit out there whereas there always was so much shit out there but there wasn't so much of a way for people to just be like eat my shit now everyone can well just, think like, about it this way based on what you said there in a way, if there's more shit out there, and I've thought about that element of it too, and you're completely right, if there's more shit out there, in the past there was less. Mm-hmm. But there was also, <coughs> because you needed a studio and a big record executive and yeah. all that kind of stuff, it meant that there could be shit in the mainstream that was heavily proliferated, that was a number one single yeah, that yeah, everyone true. was listening to. And if people had had a bajillion other songs kicking around, they would have went, wait a minute. The number one in the charts right now is a piece of shit. Yeah. I mean, and it's still the case today, but yeah. almost because the, the, the market, as you're saying, the community, the art form itself is more saturated because it's everywhere now. Yeah. It also means that it's very, e- it's a lot easier to differentiate between, uh, you know, the sheep and the goats. Yeah. You wanna, you wanna yeah, yeah. I, know, I know what you mean. Yeah, the, the shit and mess. I think the thing about the internet as well is like, kind of a little bit off topic, but not no, really. No, it's no, like, go off topic. Wouldn't be like that. the, um, it's like, the internet has it's got like a natural habit now of taking a small genre like a real niche genre like dubstep is a perfect example that everyone loved like that it was like kind of underground and you know it, it sounds true but you kind of felt cool listening to it because no one really else listened exactly, to it and it was yeah. like it was like nice it was like this new fresh thing it has mm-hmm. a way of just like like just turning that into something that no one likes anymore because it just just turns into rubbish just I know. solidifies yeah. it and makes it terrible I think that's happening to trap now as well like this year I mean Katy Perry's new song has got like fucking doot doot like a like a 808 kick yeah. drum and that and like yeah. I, I actually genuinely like that song because because trap hasn't quite got to that stage yet but it is going that like i i'm putting that out there this year by the end of this year everyone will hate trap everyone will everyone be sick of it i'm not actually familiar with trap it's it's like i mean i probably recognize it yeah, if i heard yeah. it and go it's that it's kind of it's kind of sounds like dubstep but it's like more like kind of yeah. highs and like it just has a yeah boom, i i often like I'll, i you know me Quite, you know really well you've known me for a long time mm. I'm not um, I'm a, I love music but I'm not a musical guy yeah and yeah. Uh, so I only understand music from almost like a listener's point of view yeah definitely like kind of John Peel situation you know yeah. like, that John Peel was never a musician he was always like it was like Alex Ferguson terrible football player yeah. best manager ever you know not that I care all that much about football but yeah. it's one of those things where are you comparing the, yourself to John Peel no I'm not at all um, <laughs> because I, I'm not I'm not I'm not no, I'm not. <laughs> please, but <laughs> please don't. Please, please, Lewis. Um, I'm just giving an example. I'm just giving an example. Um, basically, I mean, we're both white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Drop some controversy halfway through. But uh, the thing I liked about dubstep, um, from a, a listener's perspective, was that uh, it was very cool and complex, mm-hmm. and it had a lot of versatility because you could have metal-based dubstep, and you could have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's what gave it a lot of strength. But uh, on the internet, yeah, the internet is very faddy, 
And also, I mean, did you see... I didn't watch the Brit Awards. I never watched the Brit Awards, but I heard all about... Mm -hmm. There was, like, some controversy with uh, with the Arctic Monkeys, where they'd come up and basically done what everyone's been doing for, like, 50 years since the 60s and slagged off the mainstream music scene. Yeah. And basically said it's, like, you know, it's... it's uh, it's fatuous and ridiculous and infantile and it's kind of true what alex turner said because one of the things he said was that uh if you're if you're in the underground you come from a sort of swamp yeah and occasionally some genres go back into the swamp because yeah, the mainstream definitely. has sucked them dry like the they mummy do. films and he's basically saying that the mainstream is exists um or 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 it's a or it's parasitical in nature the mainstream only exists because it steals ideas from the underground yeah definitely. it's the only reason it exists it's like dubstep doesn't come out of emi mm -hmm. you know but it's <laughs> but it does it does go back to it it kind of uh -huh. is true in the fact that you know I've, I've for the past three years i've been saying i cannot wait for everyone to forget about dubstep and for it to then go back to like only the hardcore people that were listening to it back in the day are still that are still listening to it now are the only people that listen to it and when you put it on a party everyone again is like oh what is that shit turn it off that's what I liked about dubstep yeah. that was great I remember those dates it was yeah. brilliant when you put it on a party everyone was like what the fuck is that please turn that off <laughs> if people have like cultural amnesia I could totally see that happening with people that have mm, never definitely. heard that genre before happen. you know um, it's it yeah, will it's, happen yeah it's, it's really amazing so like in a broad sense we were talking about like, to you not to ask too much of a, a, a um maybe uh, an abstract question yeah but what does what do you think music means to you and if it means whatever it means to you what do you think it ought to mean to other people i mean if you were going to pitch music like in a marketing scheme and say this is why you need this art form in your life because okay, do you yeah. ever meet people that just go i don't really like music and you yeah, go and then i just then i then i go well i don't like you i don't i it's it's more than that though you're just like i don't have a bearing for like are you how an alien you, yeah how can you not like yeah. music i completely agree with that um that is quite an abstract question and the fact that I don't think I really need to sell music I think it's more just like for, uh, for me part of music is my life it's yeah, literally, for you, for you for, it's but. literally what I like live and breathe if it wasn't for music I would jump off a bridge it is the most important thing in my life it's, it's I've loved it ever since I was a child yeah. my dad's the big influence on me musically he doesn't actually play an instrument or whatnot, but he like likes every kind of music under the sun and that yeah. kind of like yeah I'm comparing yourself to my dad to your dad yeah. I'm comparing myself to your dad not John Peel how yeah. about that yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense it's called fire control ladies yeah. and gentlemen yeah. <laughs> um, um, but yeah yeah exactly like I I don't know I've, I've always liked all forms of music and as much as like uh, five minutes ago in this interview I was slagging all music I still think that there's there's no such thing as actually bad music no I think no. It's, it's just it is all taste yeah I mean you look at something uber mainstream I love Motown Motown's fucking mm -hmm. brilliant um uh, and and it's I think it's commercial music that people yeah there's something about commerciality and creativity they do go hand in hand I mean you look at Apple yeah but uh, there is something quite sordid about that combination when it's sure, think, yeah, surely think, for profit uh, music's you know? quite different as well because like 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 I was saying before I think people like to listen to underground music people like to listen to something that no one else has heard before and then when that then goes mainstream everyone's no, everyone's like I don't want to listen to that anymore it's not it's not cool anymore because it because it's become cool it's no longer cool <clears throat> in a weird way yeah. you know what I mean it's yeah. kind of it's like Facebook you know when your grand's on Facebook yeah. it is the end of the yeah, empire that, that's, that's, that's when you delete your account yeah. exactly yeah and it's it is one of those mafia things because you can't stay away mm. from it because it's it, it will happen yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah it interweaves itself in recent years mm. like a parasite into your life where you can't get rid of it or you lose contact with you know people whose numbers you don't have or who yeah. live in Brazil um, <laughs> as a couple of my friends do um, it is yeah I mean it may be as I say a bit of an abstract question uh, and I think that the music, and I don't know if you agree, it, it, it has an enriching effect on all other forms of expression. Mm -hmm. So someone's a journalist, they sit and listen to music uh, while they're writing. So, yeah. Or while, you know, you listen to freaking Vivaldi while you're uh, doing a, you know, while you're sort of constructing some business deal, you know? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. There's music everywhere, like in every dimension and part of our lives. And I think it's, uh, it's I think it's, the, I think it's, it's like, it's one of the oldest art forms as well. I suppose all art for painting as well, but it's like I don't know. It's just it's it's, it's there's I think there's something quite tribal about it and something quite um, human about just having that beat. Just that that beat, like it's just like work songs and just there's something there that like it just it just resonates within your whole body. It's just like that kind of like feeling of just 
that music. I don't know. It's kind of it's hard to explain. It's it's, yeah. it's really difficult. It's to sort of like the it's sort of like the art that glues all the other arts together. Yeah, you yeah. Know? For for uh, me personally, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's and, and I think that's one of the reasons it's so important. So I think we should jump forward. Yeah. Um, to uh, your essentially the the hip hop side of your your yeah. your musical um, tastes. Yep. And expressions, and you explained obviously. Uh, the promotional video the other day surprising no one ever uh, that one of your biggest influences is of course Dr. Dre yeah he's and, probably he's like the only one yeah and, and in a weird way like I do like other hip hop but for me it's like if it's produced by Dre it's, it's gonna be good do you think that Dr. Dre is a better producer than he is a rapper 100% yeah I think that's why Dr. Dre is so important I still think he's a good rapper oh he's a great rapper but I think I think he's 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 a producer to me he's a producer not a rapper yeah like yeah definitely I mean he he produced Eminem who is the pinnacle of rap exactly exactly he produced most of Eminem's albums Eminem is a better rapper than he is but Eminem also produced Recovery to, which is to, his worst to some album. extent yeah it's i mean it's 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 a decent bit of music by the standard of a lot of other people oh, if definitely. you compare them to Eminem but by oh, Eminem's standard yeah. it's not that great oh yeah i think recovery is yeah. probably it's as far as like the actual like every album in the world's concerned is probably in the top 100 mm. and Marshall that doesn't part mean to say that Dre? it's terrible in comparison to the Marshall Mathers LP exactly yeah it's part 2 Dre as well uh, Ma- Marshall uh, Mathers part 2 no that's that's a combination of it's actually Rick Rubin yeah mm-hmm. uh, Dre and him he's and the M&M. old guy in the music video isn't he yeah, yeah Rick Rubin's like a really famous producer he did, yeah. he done a, he did he, I think he did run the MC he did like a little bit of hip hop here and there but he's, he's done like he did like System of Down he's done a lot of like rock music as mm. well yeah he's like You'll honestly, you'll be surprised when you look through your music collection how many yeah. albums were produced by Rick Rubin. I wikied him and I was fairly surprised, but I yeah, can't remember a lot of the ones. I was like, it's oh wow, he did that and he did that. It's like um, I discovered a, uh, I forget his bloody name now. Oh, he completely uh, jumped out of my head. Do you ever watch Jingle All the Way? That guy, mm-hmm. all oh, these cookies. You know <laughs> that guy. You know Arnold Schwarzenegger was trying to get the toy for his kid. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, and yes. the guy with the glasses that's trying to fuck his wife. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and he, that guy, uh, Phil Hartman. Mm-hmm. He's an inc- he. He died in the nineties. He got shot in the head by his wife while he was sleeping. But I was like, oh, it's the guy from Jingle All the Way. You look on his page. He's like one that kind of Rick Rubin situation. Yeah, you yeah. look at you go, this guy is he's in everything. He's Troy McClure. Yeah, in the yeah. Simpsons. He's so famous. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and and it's yeah, it's one of those similar things where it's like. Fame is a weird thing because sometimes you never hear about someone and they could be incredibly influ- influential. Mm-hmm. And you'll hear about, you know, someone else who is actually got a lot, you know, you look yeah, at like, the X Factor or the Big Brother or something. But um, in terms of, yeah, the hip hop side of it, I mean, it was October of 2012 that you and Tom yep. released um, Drop Bombs, Not Bombs. Drop Bombs, Not Bombs. And um, for one thing, I've always wanted to ask is that um, title just supposed to be humorous or. Uh, no, no, no. no. Is that t- it's kind of like it's kind of like a, a play on make love not war. Yeah. And uh-huh. the fact that like a bomb uh in drug term is like when you crush up MDMA, put it in a skin and swallow it. Right. And so it's like dropping yeah. so you so it's like drop bombs, not bombs. Yeah. You take MDMA instead of killing the world. So so Feel my confusion is a result of my lack of experience with psychoactive drugs basically. basically yeah no no it is that's that's what it comes to drop bombs not bombs uh-huh. that kind of it's yeah, kind MDMA of a, it's makes, kind, makes you happy yeah it's kind of that play on like it's like why 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 would you why would you start wars and stuff like that why not just yeah. everyone just be happy and interact with each other and it, there's no need for it mm. plus half that album is rapping about drugs yeah so. oh yeah i mean it's 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 um i still listen to it constantly uh i think if i was to name my favorite tracks from each of the things we've listed to you Take the first album. I'm gonna go with. Um, I'm maybe gonna go with Emancipation. Yep. Um, I may also uh, go with Dandelion and Burdock, uh, which was also. Uh, I still love the way that Dandelion and Burdock sounds. Um, let's take Temporary Change. I think probably Aurora and Alienation. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, let's take. Uh, oh, I don't know. Well, Atomic Monsters. I've I've listened to Atomic Monsters yesterday and the day before, and I listened to it in the gym. Uh, almost definitely a dissect its brain. Yeah. Uh, and Heisenberg is that, is that yep, the yep. actual name of it? Yeah. And um, I think for drop bombs, not bombs, I'm gonna go for uh girls. Yeah. And I'm gonna go for well, coming down's also good. Coming down's probably my, that's um, my favorite on it. Mm, coming down's great. It's got a real coming kind down. Of, coming down felt like like something new when we were doing it. When mm. we were actually like it was actually the third song we did for it. Um. 
that felt like when when we finished it like we'd actually achieved something new that what like it wasn't like it just felt different and felt like it had a new vibe just because and i think the whole thing is obviously the song's about coming down and it kind of has that slow kind of kind of almost depressed kind of feel like kind of robotic voice and like the whole guitar solo bit and then stuff like that i don't know it just kind of felt like something yeah new when we it did reminds it. me a lot of um the raven kilmarnock yeah any given raven kilmarnock yeah you, the next the day, next day yeah the next that, yeah i know day. what you mean oh the whole thing's about the next day of course yeah um, it, is, it is about that and um of obviously i'm a gardener uh is fantastic yep. i mean I've, I've shown that music to my entire college class uh they loved it and uh it's it's fantastic i mean it is literally that kind of um uh, that great combination of having Adam, you know, uh, help you as well with the music video, well, and yeah, it's, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of not go off topic about that, but I'll kind of go into that yeah, because, of course, go right because ahead, that uh, it's funny the way that happens because me and Tom were never going to do a rap album like that was never anything that the, the whole that all started with Adam coming to me and saying, "I've got this idea, I want to do a fake rap video about gardening." Um because he did this little video called Clumsy Gardeners and he wanted to do a yeah. fake he wanted to do a fake rap video about gardening and I was like okay well I could definitely come up with a backing track and probably I could get Tom to help us out with lyrics because he does creative writing so like we thought alright we'll come up with that and then we, we recorded that that whole song and then on the way back like from like Dundee because obviously I was producing my own electronic music so I had all the stuff to record it with mm-hmm. and then on the way back from Dundee we were like driving back listening to it and we were like man this sounds really good this actually this, this actually sounds amazing I'm really looking forward to the video and it was and it was like a few days later I was speaking to Tom and I was like Tom had a couple more ideas for tracks and I was like well let's let's do an EP let's 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 do an EP and then that progressed into an album and then by the mm-hmm. time we'd actually got round to filming I'm a Gardener we had 14 tracks yeah so we were like fuck it we'll release an album with it like, so you said earlier you, I mean with regard to electronic and your sp- style specifically you are an architect as opposed to a gardener ironically yeah, yeah. um and you should definitely release a track called I'm an Architect <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> have you like throwing bricks at children <laughs> um, but uh, it's it's so it did progress directly from being a sort of oh let's try this little thing oh let's make an EP oh let's make an album yeah yeah um, and I'm also I'm also trying to think there's another track on there that's an actual duel uh, that I that I still that I still love I think it's probably it's not Abu Gabrath um, it's something else Cannabis VIP I think it could be. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, no deal. Is it deal or no deal? Deal or no deal. Yeah. Deal or no deal is a great track. Um, yeah, lyrically, yeah. it's a fantastic track. Um, Again, like like one of the things that Adam always says, and that me and Tom always say about about that album. Then what I really like about it is the fact that it's all true. There's nothing on there where we're actually like lying or like trying to be gangster or anything. Any everything we say is all true. We just like kind of almost slant it in a way to make it sounds. It was surreal for me because I was like, "Oh shit, I remember." Alec you remember Val. that guy? I remember, remember? Alec and Val. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. that shit. I remember you know? <laughs> And there was like, "Oh Horace, what he jumped out a window." I fucking remember. Yeah, yeah, that. You remember yeah. that. Well, I wasn't there, but I remember hearing about it at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's sort of weird, but it's. Uh, I think it's something that it, what you're talking about though is completely relatable to anybody who does yeah. not know you personally. Yeah, definitely as well. And I, but I think it's also that thing where it's like rap or write, write about what you know. There's no point in like trying to make shit up. Yeah, Just do what you know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You got to stick to what you know, and it's. Uh, uh, on that note, actually, we should probably talk about the upcoming album. Yep. If you would like to talk about the upcoming album, is there yeah. anything else you want to talk about? Because I wanted to leave this as the crescendo yeah. um, um, of this particular discussion. I don't really know. Yeah, kind of. Um, I just kind of want to maybe just kind of big up Adam a bit because you know he he's, he was great. He's the one that came up with the idea and whatnot, and uh, he's been great support through it. It's still one of my number one fans as far as that album's concerned. He loves it. He's um, we've got plans for a couple more videos, but they're kind of slowly happening not happening yeah. it's kind of we were planning on releasing one with this new album but we kind of never got around to it just because it's time consuming man yeah it's time consuming and it's like it's gardeners was easy because because we had all the equipment there and we had the location set and like we found the two the, the two new ones that we've come up with it's like we're going to do one called brush your teeth right which was going to be a, a, a fake rap song about how important it is to brush your teeth right but we decided we don't there's no point in doing this half ass if we're going to do it we need to have scenes in a dentist chair Yes, but, it's, but you couldn't. We couldn't. We got in contact with all the dentists. I got in contact with the uni dentist, dental, dental school, and just the, no one would let us do it. They really, wouldn't let you in, and that's that. Like, it kind of really pisses yeah. off. And what reason did they give? I'm, I'm trying to envision what the hell because what just, from dentists have just, with people well, the, music the, videos. The dentists, because because they're they're open like what nine hours. They're open from such from 
eight till five or whatnot. Yeah. So they can't do it then. We'd have to do it after hours. And for us to do it after hours, someone would. They couldn't just let us in. Someone would have to stay there with us. And no one's just no one's willing to do that. Yeah. Because we'd have to be there for a wee while. Like gardeners, we did it over two days. It's like yeah. we'd be there for at least like four or five hours uh-huh. if we wanted to get a shot. It would have to, to be get. a real dental chair, and not like a barber's chair. Yeah, exactly. Like it's yeah. I'd have to. It, I think we 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 said when we were talk, talking about it, we we're saying if we can't do get the dentist chair, we're not. Do, not let's not do it half ass. Let's yeah. not try and green screen it or try and do anything yeah. like that. It's just there's no point in doing yeah. it if we can't do it right. Yeah. You're on like a floating digital chair with yeah, exactly, horrible, exactly. like Tron Legacy with freaking you know cavities. And we, um, we've got we've got a new one that we are gonna do i won't say anything about it because i don't want to ruin it but we are we are gonna do it it's just it's just we were hoping to do it with that release of this album yeah but, and me and me and tom were, were kind of it was finished we we're like we need to uh-huh. we need to just get it out i just i really want to release it so yeah we're like we'll, we'll do the video at a later date uh-huh. and on this upcoming album i wanted to ask you uh you have worked with i believe well i mean you've worked with a lot of guys i mean i mean worked with murray back in the dying to young days yeah uh but of course you work with them with the itchy assholes as well which is something we didn't or yeah. arseholes which is of course what we we haven't actually mentioned the itchy arseholes which yeah. is um Punk. just just as a heads up folks um the the name of your your kind of organization is deadline right now. deadline beats yeah yeah and um uh, there's been a few things featured on that and among them i believe were the yep. itchy arseholes yeah yep. we released a four track ep three tracks yeah um three tracks uh, I can't remember the other two tracks, but you're underage drinking, which is underage, yeah, track, underage yeah. drinkers, germs, uh-huh. and hang 'em high. Yeah, uh huh. And I, I'll also link that in because it's um, it's very different to the other stuff you did because it's yeah, more just, yeah. it's more just. Uh, well, I mean, it really is going back to your roots because yeah. it's just rock, you know, so uh, yeah, rock and roll. it's punk rock again. Yeah. That, again, that uh, <laughs> you say what we worked for Murray on that. We didn't, we didn't work with Murray. We've had like two practices that all the drums on that are like electronic drums that I've done myself. Right. So it Mur- was like Murray is in the cover is, for that. He's right. on the yeah. cover for it. I because, thought because I was, I thought I was tripping. Yeah. No, like, well, we wanted to make it seem like a real band, and we have had a couple of practices, and we're yeah. talking about doing a gig in the future. So you had a part. virtual drummer; it was all a sham. Yeah, basically, yeah. It was like I I went into Murray's house and gave him the EP, and went, "You're in my band, right? Here's three songs. Right. You're in my band, kind of thing." And like he was like, "Okay, so yeah, yeah." So it's like he, he was he is involved. Like we have had a few practices. We know yeah. all the songs. We are going to do a gig at some point. We want to write a few more before we do a That's gig. That's great. I definitely want to see that. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I prefer it to. Yeah, I was never a huge fan of uh, of um, punk or uh, dying to young. Oh, uh, uh, well, no. You know, for the fact that my mates were in the band, it's great. Yeah, know? yeah, no, no. To, to, it was very niche. <laughs> um, but it was, for me, uh, stylistically, it wasn't really my thing. Uh, yeah, or genre, genre-wise, it wasn't really my thing. But I love the H.E. It, um It was it was great. I, I think, know. again, it's that kind of, like, piss-take lyrics as well. It's yeah. Like funny. Yeah. It's more, yeah. It's There's more a lot more of that. I think, really, really, in a weird way, like, Lonely Island kind of changed the oh, game. Oh, definitely. Because there had been spoof songs and SNL and, you know, Saturday yeah, yeah, Live yeah. and all that. But they really, really they blew, th- you know... That, really they, they the were the biggest influence for gardeners for me anyway yeah. like when, when that was what gave me I was like I wanted to kind of be like the Lonely Islands so. yeah yeah no, I, I mean that was I, I felt like uh, lyrically it was it was of equal complexity I mean like uh, it, did you say that Can I get yeah of course, of course yeah. <laughs> um, it was of it was of equal uh, complexity lyrically to anything that I've seen them produce I mean yeah, it's yeah. Uh, so you said that Tom wrote the lyrics for that which is well, no, me, me and Tom were the lyrics. You and Tom were the yeah, lyrics. We were, we were, I remember yeah. uh, speaking of, of uh, Drop Bombs, Not Bombs, I remember you showing me really rough, like, beta material yeah. in the summer of that year. Yeah, yeah. And I think you, you played a snippet from Girls yeah. when I was at your house, and I, I was like, that sounds amazing. But I remember forgetting about it. Yeah, and yeah. It got to October, and it's like, oh, did your uh, Ruben release a, a hip-hop album? And I was like, all right, wait, wait, wait did you say a hip-hop album? Yeah. And then and uh, I think it was Sean or someone who was like, yeah, yeah, they've got up on Facebook or something. And I was like, I'm going to listen to this. Yeah. But I listened to... Um, the, the first time I ever listened to the album, I actually skipped to track two because track two, I think, is Girls. Yeah. And I went, oh, yeah, Girls. I remember. No, track two is Cougar Town, but yeah, Cougar three, Town. three is Girls. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I, I saw this first track, I'm a Gardener. I was like, okay right cool and I skipped it in I was on yeah. my iPod and I was like played it listened the whole thing loved it and then I went oh shit I forgot about this first track played it I was like oh wow this yeah. is clearly like the like the set piece track of the album yeah yeah and um, it was fantastic and of this new album what has your experience been having worked with Tom in the past having worked with Emily who's of course done vocals and a lot of your music yeah. I think going back as far as um, uh, well as far as your first debut yeah, where yeah. she did um, yeah, yeah, uh, she had Make a House at Home was it? no no what was the fuck was that track called? Uh, uh, wave Goodbye Wave Goodbye of course it was Wave yeah, Goodbye yeah Wave Goodbye yeah, um, yeah no that's great uh, working with Tom Tom's like my best mate you know it's, it's just it's, yeah. it's just a laugh it's like coming out of mind 
and I got into his for the for, for the for this album it was Hate Corner to mine, but for Drop Bombs I went into his quite a few times just with my with my equipment. Yeah. Recording his like little shed. But um yeah, no, it's great working with Tom's brilliant because it's just like it's just like hanging out with your mate, but just like kind of joking about, writing lyrics together, kind of laughing about them, stuff like that. Um It feels I quite like I quite like um working with other people because it means I get to sit in the producer chair more. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's it's I get to actually like kind of almost get my kind of slant on what they're doing exactly yeah you have um, a more detached perspective yeah exactly and it's just kind of barely like that emily's great to work with as well um yeah i've worked with her for god knows how long now as well so yeah she's fine to work with um on this album we've got two other people well three new people on the album mm. we've got kyle the rapper yeah who's a good friend of mine now um he's brilliant really good scottish hip-hop artist go check him out he's brilliant um and then we've got I've got Gav Duncan, who was actually the singer in my band Letters From Above in Dundee. My right, yeah, I think Dundee. I have actually met Gav. Yeah, you probably head. have yeah. met him, yeah. Um, yeah, I had him on it. He he, he, he does uh, the chorus on one track. Uh, he's got a really good like kind of singing voice. And then we've got uh, Tom's mate, Stash Shrooms. <laughs> Stash Shrooms. Yeah. That's a fantastic name. I mean, you, you of course, you'd collaborated with another person um, in Roots, uh, I think it was Rinzo. Yes, I forgot. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Rinzo, Rinzo yeah. was. A, I think he was. Was he the only collaboration? Yeah, he did was, with Roots yeah, other yeah. than I think other Emily. Than Emily. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's fantastic. So you got three collaborating musicians coming in on the on this new album. And um, how wh- how long roughly have you been working on this new album? What uh, from the mouth to the mouth? Yeah, from the mouth to the mouth. God, a while. Like uh, one of the one of the tracks on it. Like, which is called Cave Nest Life. That we've literally had that track since about a week after Drop Bombs was released. Yeah. Um, well, we've been working on it for a while. As far as like actually properly, like right, we need to fucking sit down and do this. Yeah. Since like the start of last summer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's. I mean, it's basically been intensively in the works for about nine months. Well, sorry, for about six yeah, months. Yeah. Six roughly, months. Rather. Six months has probably been intense. Yeah. In the works. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very rewarding the creative process, isn't mm. it? Because it's one of those things you'll obsess over and worry over, but you'll make yeah, this yeah. breakthrough and you're just like, it's the Definitely. best feeling. It's kind of hard because me and Tom live in different cities as well. And it's like, we don't really see each other very often. And when we do, it's like with everyone kind of getting fucked. So it's like, it's kind of hard to like actually talk about creative process. It's kind of, yeah. But yeah, so it's like, we have to, we have to make the time, you know, he works, I've got uni, like you have to make the time like, you need to come to mind this weekend and we need to do this all yeah. weekends if we're yeah. going to get anything done kind of thing so it, it is it is quite stressful at points but it's it's, it's good it's, it's great fun because it's, yeah. it's just like having a laugh with your mates but it's just mm. I think it's when it's like you're doing a whole album and you kind of like recently as well because like we kind of we put a release date release date yeah it's going to be the 17th of March yeah, I believe so, yeah we uh, St. Patrick's Day yes it yes is. Um, uh, which is a great time to release an album but um is what I wanted to ask is, yeah, you, potentially you want people to listen to it mm-hmm. before they go out on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Because I, I work in YouTube a lot. And yeah, yeah. The time that you, I often will think ahead and go, right, I want to li- release this so that before someone, someone wakes up from their kind of night out the night before yeah. on the Saturday and they're having like their eggs and bacon um, and I release a seven minute heads up display or something. Okay, yeah, yeah. For like seven months or something. Um, that that's like that little time chunk. Yeah, you give it to someone when they're about to go out at night. Then go listen to it. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, so it's it's it, that's that's a great time because a lot of people go out on Paddy's Day and you want them to have some, be be geared up for it. Be, yeah, you exactly, know, be, exactly. Be pumped up for it. Um, and I mean that's the, as we were talking about music earlier. That's why it's so important. It can really invigorate every yeah, aspect of your life. And um, and it's and it's also a, it's also like a a, a medicine. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, and it can sort of heal to some extent, which I think is wonderful. And um, so, stylistically, this upcoming album. Yep. Um, how would you say? And you don't, not to give too much away, how would you say it differs stylistically from the last album that you released specifically on, in the hip hop genre? Um, I think. Well, it's kind of the the the, the, um, the subject matter is the same because at the end of the day, me and Tom haven't exactly changed in a year. It's still sex, drugs, and hip hop. Yeah. But. I think like obviously I've got better as a producer I think both of us have got better lyrically better writing um, as far as sounds concerned it does sound very similar but I think it just sounds better I don't I don't really know how to say it um, we all, we've also tried to do a lot more Scottish hip hop I mean Tom doesn't put on an accent for the whole album there's not a single track that Tom puts on a different accent he's just rapping his entire accent I do it like twice 
um, but that was older tracks uh, to be honest if I had the time I probably would go back and re-release them and redo them in a Scottish accent yeah um, the next one if we, we are, we are going to do the next one I don't know obviously there's nothing in the works yet yeah. but like we will do another one all Scottish accents because I think the Scottish hip hop scene isn't that big but I think it's like play to your strengths like it play like don't deny who you are like don't put on why, why put on an American accent when you've got a Scottish accent it's like it's like it's that same thing it's like if you can't if you can't provide um art for your own people then what what chance have you got providing art for everyone else so it's like you might as well and in addition to that people are i mean people are well aware of this that musically you find it less and less i think with rock and roll Re- rock and roll especially in the north of england mm-hmm. since the 80s has had the balls to really come out of it since yeah. they, no this is the way we we speak this is the way that we yeah we definitely sing. i mean there was a, a documentary that i'm pretty sure you saw as well I wrote an essay for it um, for my English class a few months ago uh, called The Great Hip Hop Hoax. Oh, absolutely and brilliant. It's, uh, I forget the name, it's Gavin and Mark, I think. Yeah, I can't remember. And uh, them. That, their whole Syllable anxiety. and Brains. Yeah, Syllable and Brains. Uh, they released a new music video, which is, it's really gory. It's yeah, yeah, brilliant. it's good. It's pretty good. Um, and basically, uh, it's it's like a little snuff film, isn't it? It's all yeah. like sick stuff, you know. But it's... um. Uh, they, they their main thing was that they were they had a lot of anxiety about their accent and although I did read um, something somewhere that there's a lot of evidence that one of the main uh, origins of hip hop mm-hmm. because a lot of Scottish people left Scotland and went to America to become slaveholders yeah that the reason that hip hop some of its stylistic origins come from the old clan rivalries where what would actually happen is in a sort of Celtic thing mm-hmm. uh, the Celts were famous because if they were going to have a fight and Celts still do this because we're yeah. still a Celtic, you know, Scandinavian yeah. culture. Um, they'll sort of go, you know, like they used to stand in front of each other, like flex and muscles, talk about like I'm descended from this guy and this guy, and like like Ragnar right, the Great, okay, yeah, he was so a hard mean, guy, yeah. and this this is like my respect and my lineage. And basically, that's and basically what crew. they would also do <laughs> yeah. is in the Scottish Islands they would speak really fast at each other. I forget what the word they used, and it's basically the origins of rap battles. Yeah. Yeah, um, that's that's kind of weird, and it's I, weird. That it's ironic that Scottish people with hip hop, because there's actually a lot of uh, anthropological evidence that there is a lot of Scottish hip hop out there. It's culturally, hip hop has yeah. a lot of its origins in Scotland. Yeah, no, there is, is there is loads. Like like I said, for, for me, I mean, the only one, the only guy that I actually know personally is Kyle the rapper. Kyle's, and he's phenomenal. He's absolutely brilliant. Like his, his both his, I actually produced his newest EP. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's, he did. That's fantastic. What's it called? Uh, it's Cherub. Right, okay. Um, I will also link that in the yeah, description. Yeah, 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 no, definitely, because uh-huh. like, he's brilliant. Um, yeah, I produced his new EP, he's great. Yeah, I, I think there's, there is a lot of Scottish hip-hop, it's just, it's just not even that, it's not even that big in Scotland. I mean, I remember I was working at the Muscle Inn this year, in the kitchen, and I put on Drop Bombs Not Bombs, because a few guys in the kitchen wanted to hear it, and like, some of the waiting staff coming in and out of the kitchen were like, what the fuck is that? I was like, that's me, it's Scottish hip hop. They're Scottish, and they looked at me like, Scottish hip hop, are you mad? That is absolutely stupid. Why the fuck would you ever produce or listen to yeah. that? I'm like, what is wrong with you? There's a, like, yeah, there's a, there's a, <laughs> a, a really strong uh, seam of anxiety that runs, yeah, that runs really through is. Scottish the, culture. Yeah, I don't think there should be, because yeah. it's like, it's, like I said, if you can't produce my art for your yeah. own people, why are you producing for everyone else? Exactly, yeah. So, I think part of that comes from the anxiety within Scottish culture and not mm. from a perceived uh, threat from outside. There's a lot of people that say Scotland would be this and Scotland would be that if England stopped, you know. And yeah, I, yeah. I think that can be true. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a lot more true in the case of Wales because um, Welsh culture is sort of been belittled and sort of it's a very it's seen as very quaint yeah um which is a shame because you know welsh culture um but uh, i think in the scottish case yeah there's a lot of it does come from just a lack of self-belief and yeah, people are willing definitely. to say no that sounds crazy because it's in my own accent i think it's, it's very important to believe in yourself you know i think i think scotland is kind of it kind of it has this thing where although we think we're amazing we're also like serious pessimists and that we don't believe that we can actually achieve something um I'm not going to go into it, but that, I think that's the same kind of thing the independence vote that yeah. I think. I mean, it's uh, the, you know, architects, engineers, Scotland basically invented the free market system. Yeah, yeah. Adam Smith invented the modern done so much that uh, it's like, capitalist system and it's sort of been corrupted by other people. But, you know, it's the thing is, I think, so influential. I think it's like we look, we kind of look down upon ourselves and I think like, like obviously like that, I think the English quite often look down upon us as well. Like, but I think out, outside of that, like, I've been in America a couple of times. Whenever you say you're Scottish, they fucking love it. Yeah. They absolutely love it. Like the, I think loads and loads of countries love the Scottish, and like yeah. we have prospects and we have a reason. Like arts as well. Like we, we we're forefront of that. It's like just just accept it. Like 
That's that's that, that basically to go back. That's what I'm saying is that I think Scottish accent on a rap song. That's that's what we're trying to do. we try to do that a lot more in this one. And decentralized art is on the rise because you're seeing. And I studied the big six as they're called in the media, the big six media conglomerates. Mm-hmm. Disney's one of them. Viacom's another one. Yeah. Um, these are massive corporation corporations. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah, corporations yeah. that own corporations. Yeah. And they run most of the media. You're seeing a huge decentralization. Like have you ever seen House of Cards? Yeah, House of Cards produced by Netflix. Yeah, yeah. And there's a huge groundswell of change as we're talking about the internet happening in media and music is media. Yeah, like yeah. everything else, like film is media. And, um, British film industry expanding massively. Harry Potter actually did it a lot of yeah. favors because it's become too expensive to produce films in California. Yeah. And so we're talking about this regionalization of art. I say 10 years time with the help of deadlock <laughs> with any luck <laughs> you're going to you're going to have someone come up to someone else and say are you listening to American hip hop you know go listen to some Scottish hip hop yeah really, yeah really no, are I you think that it has grown it has grown even in the past like 3 years I've noticed that like, more people yeah. are listening to it more people are into it more people are accepting that it's actually happening that it is a thing mm-hmm. and yeah exactly like I hope it does because it's great some of the summer Scottish hip hop is amazing the only problem is they do quite often like conform to cliches like all they rap about is like Bucky Balls yeah yeah there's a big problem with that in Scottish film like a legitimate criticism that was raised by I think Ian Rankin who mm-hmm. said you're going to make a film like Filth film like Filth is fantastic but you don't need to harp on the Scottish thing yeah you don't people, you don't. don't need to people already know who you are you don't need to mm-hmm. to do that and I, uh, I, I man it's been fa- fantastic talking to you yeah. I've waited two years to, ha- to sit yeah, down yeah. and have this kind of conversation with you and I hope that you come on the show again and I hope very much if he's listening that Tom's interested in that as well yeah yeah so I'd definitely. much like to have Tom on the show yeah uh, in addition to your good self maybe yeah. this time next year maybe before yeah, then yeah, you definitely. never know uh, so thanks well, a lot well, for coming on from yeah. the mind to the mouth is Deadlock's new and upcoming album Dandelion Deadlock, Deadlock and Dandelion um, or Deadlock and Dandelion Dandelion yep. and Deadlock. You can use them interchangeably, but they will be written a very specific way on the album cover. They are. So, it's, no, it's Deadlock comes first. Does it come first? Deadlock yeah. comes first. <laughs> I take default building selected. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so thanks a lot for coming on, man. That's going to be out March seventeenth, and it's going to be on. It's going to be Dropbox or it's going to be Bandcamp. It's going to be Bandcamp. Uh huh. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So I will Cheers. post all of those links in the description. Thanks a lot for coming along, man. I uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I'll see you guys later on. If you want to check out any of Dandelion Deadlock stuff on social media, do you have a Facebook page, Twitter, uh, YouTube? Yeah, you know, um, go like Deadline Beats on Facebook. Yeah, go like Deadline Beats on Facebook. I entirely concur. And you're also on YouTube, and that's youtube.com forward slash Deadline Beats. And if you can't find it that way, just type in Deadline Beats into yep. uh, the search bar. I've tried it myself. It's one of the first things that comes up. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, it's the so, thing. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot for listening, folks, and I will see you all later on.